So here's our saline implant and what we'll do is we'll put a needle into it and again this kind of failure occurs 2% over 7 years 3% over 10 years. And what you can see are a few drips of water here and when deflation occurs it doesn't occur rapidly it occurs over a period of days and weeks. But ultimately all of the saline comes out that can't be repaired. So when this implant is flattened a woman would notice loss of the breast fullness. For people who have any health concerns one advantage is that it is saline, it is salt water, the same salt water that's given to you intravenously in the hospital if you need an IV. So there shouldn't be any concerns about uh, being medically harmed by the contents of this implant. So we can see that after uh, the shell has lost its integrity, the volume of this implant is lost. This also helps to illustrate though how a saline implant can be placed through a very small incision around the breast. This is the original style of silicone gel implant. The material on the inside is liquid silicone, the consistency of honey. And if the shell is disrupted, if there's a pinhole leak, that material will leak out and may cause scar tissue to develop around the implant. That can result in a change in the shape of the breast and that can result in hardness or scar tissue developing around the breast. When we insert a needle into this, what we can see is that the silicone gel material has a tendency to come out of the implant and when we cut it further we'll see that this material really can run all over. So instead of staying intact as part of the implant this material can run out of the implant and that's the nature of the old style silicone gel implants these implants of course we don't use any longer we use the new generation of silicone gel implants so this is the new generation of silicone gel implant these are cohesive gel or sometimes called gummy bear implants because the inner contents while still soft are thicker than the old style silicone implants and if the shell is cut if the implant loses its integrity the gel doesn't run all over the place this particular implant is a sample not for implantation in live patients this is for demonstration purposes only and this one is manufactured by the McGann Corporation and it's called the Natrell implant. What we're going to do is start first by injecting a needle into the implant and see if we can get any of the material to come out. And I think what you'll find is that if any material does come out, it goes right back in. So we'll start just with the, a large needle and inject there. And that's water. And if you compress it, it's very difficult to get any material to come out at all because it's a thicker material you might be able to see a little bit of emergence of silicone but when you relax the pressure it goes right back in the next is to take the scalpel to this implant we're going to actually cut this implant in half and starting over here we'll cut this entirely and see what happens with the natural implant when it is cut in half. And what you find is the material essentially stays within the shell, connected to itself. And it's not so easy to cut in half. These implants, of course, come from the manufacturer completely filled so they require a little longer incision than saline implants but you now have two halves of an implant 
and that's the technology that is behind calling these cohesive gel implants because the silicone itself is cross-linked more to itself which simply means that it stays together and it retains its shape so it still has the softness of a silicone gel implant but will retain its shape even when cut in half currently about eighty percent of my patients choose silicone gel implants instead of saline implants these are typically softer there are some FDA restrictions uh, you must be 22 years of age to have access to these implants but I do believe it's a safe implant and it's quite an interesting demonstration to see what happens with the silicone.